Hey guys, so I was taking a look at Tekken Power's benchmarks and the results of the last round surprised me. This framework is taking the first two positions and there is a large gap with the next in the rank. If I'm not mistaken, this amount is requests per second and is ridiculous. 700,000 requests per second. In fact, of the first 50 frameworks, I only know Vertex. The other ones are way down in the list. The top framework this time is called Actix for the Rust programming language. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to learn Rust, learn Actix and build a pretty simple to-do service to get a sense of how it is to develop on this platform. So what is Actix? Actix is a powerful actor system for the Rust programming language. Actix Web is a web framework built on top of Actix, which supports HTTP 1 and 2. Actix aims to be type safe since everything has types feature rich by providing a lot of features out of the box such as login and HTTP 2, extensible and blazingly fast as we saw on the benchmarks. But why Rust? Rust is also blazingly fast memory efficient, all that without sacrificing safety. It is able to eliminate many classes of bugs at compile time and has really great tooling. So let's start by installing Rust. We can do that easily by running this simple command in the terminal. Once that is done, I should have Cargo, the package manager, and Rust C, the compiler. So let's create a folder, change to that directory, and we'll create our project by using cargo init a specify bin since we want a binary and the name of the project to do actix. A folder structure is created for us with the git repository by default. The project contains a cargo.toml file and a source directory. Inside the source directory we have a main file with a simple hello world code. We can run the project we just created by using cargo run. It will compile the files and we will see the hello world message. So I will use Visual Studio Code to work on the project since it's free. In the cargo.toml file we have the metadata of the project and we can specify the dependencies. In the main file we have a simple main function that prints hello world. So let's start by adding the dependencies in the cargo.toml file. We'll add actix runtime actix web. Back in the main file, we'll create an HTTP server. To do so, we'll call the new function to access items in a module or call a static method. We use two colons in Rust. New expects a factory to create the app. So we'll write an anonymous function with no parameters that will return the app. Let's create the app, so write app, call the new function, and this will be a builder. Since this is a builder, we can add routes like so. We call the route function and pass a path and a handler as parameters. So let's create a status endpoint in the root path. In this case, this will be a handler for get requests, and the handle function will be called a status. This will be an asynchronous function, so we will use the async keyword and the return type will be something that implements a responder. To make things easier, we will just return the JSON as a string. So let's write a simple JSON with a status app. That should be all for the handler. Now we just need to specify the host and the port of the server by using the method bind. We will tell the server to run and await. The main function should also be asynchronous. And the last thing will be to specify this main function so it runs in the Actix runtime. And that's done using this macro from the Actix runtime module. I'll just need to fix this typo, use a wait and put a semicolon on the, on the imports and also specify the return type of the main function. In this case, we'll use an empty result. This parenthesis just means nothing. It's the unit, similar to void in other programming languages. 
and that should be all. So let's save and run this application. It should start downloading the new libraries and compiling them. Once that's done, our server should be up. To make it more obvious, let's just print a message at the beginning so we know which host and port we are using. Perfect. Now, to test our server, we'll just use a curl command. We got the status. To make things more interesting, instead of using a string, we can add a library so we can serialize our data structures. That library is Serdi. So let's add that to the dependencies. To keep things a bit more organized, let's create a new file to have our models. Once we create a new file, we must specify the module in the main file. So that's included in the app. Great. So let's start by creating a public struct for our status. We just need a single public attribute that will be a string. Let's also import Certi so we can deserialize our data. To do so, we'll use a macro that will derive the code to deserialize this struct. Now we can replace this string with an HTTP response of type OK that will return a status 200 and we can call that JSON that will handle the conversion and will also add a content type header. Now we can include our model. Once we do that, we can create an instance of that struct with the attribute OK and we convert that to a string. We can see something is wrong in the editor. So let's run cargo check. Once it's finished, it will tell us the error that we are having. So it seems that we need to serialize, not deserialize. So we just need to change that in the models file, make sure to save, and now the error is gone. We check again, everything looks fine, and we can run the app again. Let's try with curl command, it's there. We just may we printed OK instead of app, easy to fix, we fix that, done. Perfect, we have the same result. So that will be all for this video. In the next video, we will add the configuration for the service, we'll make the database connection, and we'll create the models for our to-do service. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider hitting the like button, subscribe and hit the bell for future videos, and if you have any question, just leave a comment. Thanks for watching.